Well, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome you tonight in house. Thank you so much for coming out on this Wednesday night for our Bible study and prayer time. And may the Lord bless our time together. Uh, of course, we have Sunday school at 10 on Sunday morning. Don't forget about that. Worship service at 11. God's blessed us uh, so tremendously at Westside and even in the last few weeks with services. It's just been sweet spirit. Thankful for that. We're not live right now, but still being recorded, and so I welcome you all who will see this after a while. Thank you for uh, joining us and, and uh, listening to the Bible study and worshiping with us. Let's go to the Lord and ask for his blessings upon our time. Father, we again come to you, to the throne of grace, thanking you for all your many blessings. You are so good to us, much better than we deserve, it is, as it is often said. Forgive us, Lord. Uh, we need renewal. We need refreshing. Uh, we need, if, if you will, a, a fresh dip in the Jordan, Lord. And so tonight as we come into this place, um, there's so much bad news. There's so many people struggling. There's so much strife in our nation, in our state. Oh, God, we, we just need the Holy Spirit to uh, give us peace. Give us joy in the midst of all of us. Give us assurance, even as the world changes so drastically each day. God, uh, thank you for giving us this time to look into your word, and I pray, God, that it will be glorifying to you and beneficial uh, to those listening. Use it, O oh God, to build us up in our faith and to edify the church. God, and uh, we would rejoice greatly if it would lead someone to knowing you as personal Lord and Savior. God, hear our song tonight, and we thank you for hearing our prayers. And we pray, Lord, that your will is done in our lives this evening. Bless our services. They're for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Brandon, if you will, come and lead us. Good evening, West Side. You know, Alan was right, uh, talking about how a lot of bad news out there and everything. And this song that we're about to sing, this hymn we're about to sing, makes me, it's one I like to sing whenever I'm getting down and everything because I need that renewal. And I, I just start asking myself, just uh, just remember what Jesus done for us. You know, tell me that story. I need, I need to hear that story every day to, for that renewal. So let us stand and we will sing 220, Tell Me the Story of Jesus and all three verses.
Wednesday night study, we thought of, of a new direction, so to speak. Uh, I think we started this last week. This is just the second week of the thought of finding hope and happiness in the heart of Christ for our Wednesday night Bible studies. Now, I will say on our Sunday mornings, uh, going through, I think, the end of this month, we have, uh, we're talking, working our way through Matthew chapter 24, living with the end in mind, speaking about Christ's return. But uh, tonight, we're going to be looking at compassion, and how compassion is the heart of Christ. And let's go to Matthew chapter 14, and I'm just going to read two verses, verses 13 and 14. And uh, earlier, Jesus is told about the death of John the Baptist, and it says in verse 13 of Matthew chapter 14, Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. Now there's, that's a lot we could unpack in that sentence, but that won't be our theme tonight. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. We all have received compassion from certain people at points in our lives. And sometimes people that we've received compassion from that we're not known for their compassionate acts. I've also, we've heard stories and interviews where sometimes even the most hardened uh, people at times showed compassion on someone or some people, even if they didn't fully understand why they might have done so at the time. You know, I was thinking, even in our lives, uh, there have been times where we have been hard towards others. Maybe that's just me here tonight, but there's times where we can be hard towards others, saying things like, well, they got what they deserved. Uh, or, as we used to hear, they made their bed, now they've got to lay in it, right? And then there are other times uh, in our human lives that we can see almost the same situation, and for certain reasons, sometimes we don't even understand why. I feel compassion for a person or a family or people and show acts of mercy towards them. I guess my point is, is it doesn't matter who you are, sometimes everybody in some way has compassion, other times we don't. My point is we're a little inconsistent with that at times, aren't we? Jesus is much different, and we rejoice in that. It's not that Jesus chose at times to show compassion, but it is that compassion is in the very heart of Jesus Christ. Let's go deeper. Compassion is the heart of Christ. Compassion is who he is, and so compassion is what he shows. It's at the core of his being. You cannot be the savior of lost, undeserving, and fallen creatures without having compassion for them, can you? And Jesus is much more consistent he is always consistent with his compassion. Henry Ward Beecher said this, Compassion will cure more sins than condemnation. And I think that is proven in Jesus Christ and in what he did to rescue us from death and hell. 
Compassion, again, will cure more sins than condemnation. John chapter 3 and verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world. Why? Because the world's already condemned. We're already condemned and separated from God. But God sent his Son into the world, it says in John 3, 17, that in order that the world might be saved through him. William Cooper, the hymn writer, said this, man may dismiss compassion from his heart. Sometimes we do. But God never will. I'm glad of that, aren't you? I'm glad of that. That even when I refuse to show compassion and I show hardness, that God never does. Compassion doesn't just happen on our end because you see someone down on their luck, as we say, uh, and feel sorry for them. Real compassion happens when you care for another human being. Compassion boils in our hearts when we show not only sympathy, but we show empathy. When we put ourselves in someone else's skin, so to speak, or when we consider what life might be like if we were in someone else's shoes. And remember, Jesus Christ did that very thing he put on our skin. He walked more, much more than a mile in our shoes and is even still in flesh today in heaven. He understands our fallen condition more than we give him credit for and he shows compassion towards us still. I tell you, that should bring hope and happiness uh, to each of us tonight. In Matthew 14 that we read, Jesus saw the great amount of afflicted people and the scriptures say that he had compassion on them. Their sickness of body and soul troubled Jesus. And his compassion would lead him to giving them food as we see in that same chapter that he feeds the 5,000. And there were many more thousands than that, actually, counting men, women, and children. He had compassion on them that they had come from afar to hear him and to be touched by him and didn't want them to leave hungry. He looked upon them as he looks upon all of mankind as sheep without a shepherd. And because of his compassion, he desires, what a beautiful thought, Jesus desires to be the gentle shepherd that we so desperately need. Eighty-nine chapters uh, make up the four Gospels, and they show throughout them the compassionate and affectionate heart of Jesus Christ in action, not just in word, but in deed, in action. And yet, for some reason, uh, in, in our minds, we often doubt his compassion for our lives. Or maybe we doubt that others can experience the compassionate heart of Christ because of their lives. Listen, I, I know I'm talking to people that know a little bit about God's word and of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, Jesus will judge the nations. Jesus will, as the scriptures say, one day separate the goats from the sheep. He will separate the wheat from the chaff and burn the chaff in judgment. But many people have a hard time reconciling his judgment from his compassion. His wrath and his mercy are, are not at odds with each other. In fact, they're linked together by an eternal chain that cannot be broken. That is because his wrath is just. It's not like our wrath. And if he were not just, he would not be affectionate and compassionate. If he did not punish the unconfessed and unrepented of their sin, rebellion, and wickedness, he, he would not be compassionate, but he is Therefore, he is just. So absolutely, yes, he must one day judge evil and sin and wickedness. But out of that very same heart, out of that very same heart, pours compassion 
for us as sinners and sufferers. He doesn't want us to experience what he knows he has to bring about. The truth of God's just wrath and judgment actually makes his compassion and his gentleness even more beautiful. At least if you recognize that you deserve wrath and judgment, but instead you received grace and mercy from a gentle and humble Jesus who offers his salvation freely unto us. It is therefore impossible for the compassionate and gentle heart of Jesus Christ to be over-celebrated and exaggerated. Unfortunately, sometimes I feel as, as if we might think that that is possible, to celebrate the compassionate heart of Christ towards sinners too much. I don't think we'd say those words, but I think we might act that out sometimes. I, I do believe that there are some Christians that think, uh, that just think judgment and damnation should be preached every message. And yes, Jesus never shied away from speaking about the judgment to come. That is true. And we do often say in the recorded Gospels, there are more times he spoke of the judgment to come than he did even of heaven, even though that's not a great uh, distance between the two, but it is true in the recorded. But he never shied away, but his words and his acts of compassion far outweigh any conversations that he had upon the wrath to come. And so, yes, as Christians, we should have a healthy and balanced fear and respect for judgment to come. But let me ask you this. Do we want, really, do we just want to tell people to miss hell because it's bad? Or do we really want them to be with Jesus because he loves them and they love him because he loved them? Which do you really want? And yet to some, to preach on the compassion and the love and the gentle spirit of Jesus Christ seems too weak. If I can stand on a soapbox just for a second as a pastor, it's true an evangelist can come into a church or a conference and he can preach on that judgment. That's kind of why he's there, really, to get people revved up, charged up, and, and call sinners to repentance. But a, a pastor that is there each week, even Billy Graham said, uh, he can't preach like a, the pastor that's there each week. It, there needs to be a balance as the heart of Christ is perfectly balanced. The very fact that he came to us because of our fallenness is what makes Christ so attractive. Not just that he is the free ticket out of hell. As a matter of fact, it's been said by others much greater than myself that if you're just wanting uh, fire insurance, you probably not truly saved. Any sane person that really believes in hell doesn't want to go to hell. But do we really want to go to heaven because the gentle shepherd loved us and showed compassion for us and we desire to be with him? That's what we call relationship. We see in the Gospels that the deeper the fallenness of man, the more that Jesus' heart reaches out and is attracted to it. We remember the parable of the Good Samaritan, don't we? And the religious kept going away. And Jesus is a picture of the Good Samaritan that came to the sick man that was beaten, bruised, bloody, and battered. And while everybody else went on the opposite side of the road, he came and tended to him. He brought about his healing and his care. Jesus' most natural instinct, and we see this all throughout the Gospels, is to move 
towards sin with grace and mercy. It's not that he approves of sin, but he moves towards sinners with grace and mercy, not away from it. However, unfortunately, if we're honest, many times we do the opposite. He gravitated toward it. Think of this. The, when the only pure, clean, and holy man walked upon the earth, what did he do when he came across prostitutes and lepers? He went towards them again while others went away from them. And in doing this, Jesus was reversing the Jewish order of religion that had in many ways become corrupt. The religious teachers and leaders wouldn't be caught near a leper or a prostitute. When Jesus did this with what some would refer to as the worst of the unclean, so to speak, he wasn't tearing apart the natural order of mankind by gravitating towards sinners. He was actually restoring the natural order of mankind that Adam and Eve knew before sin destroyed their relationship with God. He wasn't destroying the natural order. He was restoring the natural order that we were created to know our God and to be in a relationship with him in covenant agreement with him. Now, Hebrews 13, 8 is a scripture that we know very well and we do quote from time to time. But how I have forgotten this many days. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. You believe that's true? Then, if that's true, and we believe that's true, then how he walked upon this earth is also how he still feels about us and all sinners still today in heaven. We'd have to agree with that, wouldn't we? If he is the same yesterday and today and forever, his heart has not changed. His heart has not changed. He is still compassionate towards us, even and especially when we are troubled and burdened and tormented in this life. He comes to us all the more closely. He knows where each one of us are in life tonight. He knows the good, the bad, and the ugly. He has compassion for us while we hurt, while we struggle with whatever is gnawing on our minds and our bodies and even our hearts tonight. He's not weak, but he is meek. And he's still the gentle shepherd that wants to bring about forgiveness and salvation and healing and help into our lives tonight. If that's what he did when he walked upon the earth, and if he is the same, then he still wants to be that gentle shepherd full of compassion tonight. You know, that's why we can trust him, and that's why we love him. That's why we love him. But as we close tonight, that's also why we who have experienced his goodness towards us can and should show compassion towards others who are sin sick and suffering. His heart should beat in ours. Amen. Father, we rejoice and find hope and happiness in your compassionate heart tonight. Forgive us, O oh Lord, for the times we have actually 
allowed our hardened hearts to block us from being hopeful and happy, not receiving your gentleness towards us. I pray, Lord, that uh, through these words tonight and through looking at your heart, that we will find the help that we need, the healing that we need, the forgiveness that we need, maybe even for some, the very salvation that we need. Help us, O oh Lord, and especially myself, to have compassion towards others as you have shown your compassion and gentleness and patience towards me. Help us, O oh God, to receive your heart into our life and to show that heart to others in need. I ask these things in the precious and holy name of Jesus Christ and all of his children tonight said, Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, for our Bible study tonight. We pray for you. We appreciate uh, you listening. Share this with others. Always love to see the comments and encourage you to do that. And of course, again, if at all possible, be with us uh, in worship for worship service. Sunday school at 10, we have a class for everybody, and a small group Bible study is so important and vital to the health of each Christian. And then, of course, our worship service at 11 o'clock as we continue with the theme of uh, living with the end in mind, speaking of Christ's return. May God bless you. Goodbye.